Okay, part three of this interactive lecture. So let's talk about Larry Lessig a little bit further. So he's a classic liberal and certainly not an anti-capitalist, but he thinks that the balance has swung too far toward the major entertainment companies who own the bulk of the creative copyright and want to strengthen their monopolies on cultural products such as popular music and cinema. If we use read-write in terms of culture and in terms of Lessig, to quote Lessig, creativity in innovation always builds on the past. The past always tries to control the creativity that it builds upon and free societies enable the future by limiting the power of the past. Uh, creativity should not be controlled by the past, nor should it be a top-down experience. The value is in the innovation experience of user-created content. The value is in the innovative, innovative experience of users creating content. So if we use uh, a lawyer term in regard to com copyright, namely the Mickey Mouse rule, we can see history's control explicitly acting out in today's environment. So to expand on that a little bit further, in 1928, Walt Disney created Mickey Mouse in Steamboat Willie which of course was built upon, well actually a parody of Steamboat Billy. This set the course of how Disney would create content for its future. That is, find material in the public domain, i.e. free of copyright, modify it, and then apply their own copyright on the product to pre prevent it from being adopted or modified any further. So then each time Mickey's copyright comes up for review, we suddenly see copyright law change to accommodate Steamboat Willie, which ensures this copyright is maintained by the Disney Corporation. This best demonstrates the past powers controlling our contemporary society through copyright laws. So I think we need to continually challenge and modify. So from Lessig, we can see that he can mount three compelling arguments. That the continual extension of copyright terms over the last two centuries has restri restricted the capacity for people to make innovative derivative works and distribute them in new ways using new technologies. We've gone from copyright lasting 14 years to copyright lasting the lifetime of the holder plus 70 years. That's an entire other lifetime. While the popular life of your average cultural product has shrunk, the life expectancy of a best-selling novel has halved within the last decade. Number two, the distributed architecture of the net requires new ways of thinking about copyright control. And number three, that big companies will strangle what he's called free culture through the use of devices used to enforce blanket copyright protections. For example, regional DVD lockouts and copyright or copy protection software. Um, I'll finish this video here and then we'll pick it back up uh, talking about Remix.